Okay, all right. Okay. Yeah, good morning, everyone. My name is Matthias Hennings, and uh, I'm from Kwanzaa Gakuin University, um, which you can see here on this picture. Uh, it's a private university located a little bit up the hill between the cities of Osaka and Kobe. And I will be presenting uh, or talking about developing high quality coil courses to foster 21st century skills among students. So what can you expect in the next uh, 15 to 20 minutes presentation? Um, first, I will give you a brief background on the topic. Then I will talk about how to implement coil type lessons, give some examples of coil courses here at Kwanzaa Gakuin University um, before coming to a summary and conclusion. And then I hope that in the end, when we have the Q&A, we will have a fruitful discussion um, about these topics. Okay, so um, in recent years, we have seen an increase in courses which utilize virtual exchange and collaborative online international learning. However, the quality and content of that courses differs very much between universities in Japan. For example, some universities offer courses where students simply just meet once a week or several times a semester um, to chat and talk, whereas other universities are offering courses where students collaborate online on a project for a longer period of time. Accordingly, those courses um, foster different skills. So a course where students just meet um, once a week might foster communication skills, but it does not develop critical thinking, creativity, or co collaboration. So um, to develop all of the 21st learning skills and also many of the literacy and life skills, um, it is important to develop high quality COIL courses. So what does COIL mean? Um, COIL actually means learning that utilizes information communication technology tools to collaborate with students abroad. Um, in that sense, it differs uh, quite a lot from virtual exchange because virtual exchange doesn't have this collaboration component. So it's just online learning that includes student interaction. If there is no student interaction with students abroad and no collaboration, then it's an online learning program in a general sense. Um, I think we all have experienced those online learning programs um, because many of us, I think, um, taught those programs. It's, for example, just a lecture uh, or a seminar we were teaching face to face, had to convert it uh, to an online format um, due to the pandemic. So instead of doing it face to face, the lecture or the seminar was taught via Zoom. COIL, on the other hand, is the most specific among these as it includes the development of a joint syllabus with a university abroad and also joint management of classes. So it's a high level type of virtual exchange. To call it high quality uh, COIL, uh, at least at Kangaku or uh, KGU here, we have the rule that it needs to include more than 30% of student interaction. So if students only meet uh, once a week or so, um, then we don't call it a COIL course. Uh, actually, we have a lot of courses like this. We have an online global cafe where students meet with students abroad once a week and they chat, talk about different topics. We have other exchange programs, um, but we do not call it high quality COIL. Um, so it really needs uh, to meet all that requirements that students collaborate that it's based on a joint syllabus and that it includes more than 30% of student interaction. So uh, that means if you have a course with um, 14 classes, 30% of student interaction means that at least five classes uh, in this course need to be taught as uh, COIL classes where, where interaction happens. And um, one problem we often have is that uh, the academic schedules between Japan and um, the universities abroad are not matching. Um, so as you can see here on that picture, um, it's also possible um, to do it when the academic schedules are not exactly matching. So the partner university, for example, could start the, the COIL course or the COIL components from class five until nine or 10. Whereas in Japan, we could start in the first class and do it until the fifth class. 
Um, this is something that happens a lot with the universities in the United States, because when we start the schedule, uh, academic schedule in Japan, in the States, most of the time the academic schedule already comes to an end. So often uh, our American partners do the COIL part in the end of the course and we do it in the beginning, but it's still possible to do it together. Um, it's also possible, of course, to do it um, over different time zones because you can change the format, as you can see here. So one option is to do it live, uh, for example, via Zoom, so synchronous interaction, but of course, it's completely possible to do it asynchronous, that you use a platform like Slack or Facebook groups where students uh, upload things and then the students at the program. Or it's possible to do a mix of both where students sometimes meet and sometimes they work on something collaboratively um, offline. So as you can see, it's possible to implement um, across different time zones and also with uh, different academic schedules. Um, but it's also possible to implement the high quality COIL courses, even if the subjects uh, at both universities are completely different. Uh, so the goals, learning outcomes, and evaluation criteria for the COIL course do not necessarily have to be the same. Um, a good example is um, an English education subject or a class for English learners here in Japan and an East Asian studies class, um, for example, abroad. So students work uh, on a project or on a, on a presentation together. But um, the goal then um, in Japan is language acquisition. And the evaluation criteria is English proficiency and the goal uh, abroad um, would be acquisition of specialized knowledge and evaluation criteria would be uh, understanding of the topics. Um, so um, uh, very often you, you find partners, but actually the subject is, is very much different. But even then, depending on what you let students work on, it is possible to implement a high quality COIL course. Um, a good example um, of such a course we have here at Kwansi Gakuen University is a course on a manzai comedy, which you can see here on the top right picture. Uh, manzai is a special form of Japanese stand-up comedy. And um, we do that course with an American institution. And um, in Japan, this is a course for English language learners. Um, so the uh, Japanese students here um, develop together a stand-up comedy with American students in English and also perform that comedy live uh, via Zoom. Um, but the learning goal for the English learners is um, to learn new words, new expressions, do a comedy in English, um, whereas the learning outcome or the learning goal for the um, students in the US is learning about that special form of Japanese comedy and Japanese culture in a, in a more broader sense. Um, another course we have um, is a course on accounting, which is using Lego with an Italian institution, uh, which you can see here on that picture below. Um, so in that course, uh, students have to make a product uh, using Lego. And each Lego part uh, has a price. So they have to calculate the price, how much it costs to make the product. They have to buy products, uh, uh, buy parts. They have to trade parts. Uh, and to do so, they have to collaborate also with students abroad and with their team members. And um, by doing that product uh, using Lego, they are also learning a lot about accounting. Um, so these are just two examples of um, a huge variety of courses we offer. Um, so we have 10 faculties and centers, meanwhile, that are designing and offering COIL courses. Um, but again, um, to call it a high quality COIL courses, they all um, need to follow that criteria that it's based on a joint syllabus designed by instructors of both institutions. And more than one third of the total teaching time must involve students' collaborative learning. So not only interaction, but also you know, some collaborative work. Yeah. Otherwise, we call it coilish. Yeah. And we have a lot of coilish courses as well, but then it's not a high quality coil course. OK, so um, one more course I would like to introduce a little bit more in detail. Um, that's a course I'm teaching by myself. It's called uh, HR Management and Employment, which I teach together with uh, Trinity University in Texas, USA. And that course is taught over seven weeks with classes twice a week. Learning outcomes are an understanding of HR and employment system in Japan and the US. 
and also understanding the differences, uh, where those differences in the systems come from. And of course, development of 21st century skills. Um, the class format is a mix of content classes and activity classes with asynchronous and synchronous interaction between Japanese and American students during the course. Um, I visualized um, this class format um, on the next slide here. So as you can see, um, it's 14 classes, but taught over seven weeks. And uh, in each week we have two classes and one class is a content class, um, whereas the next one is an activity class. So in the content class, we always have a reading um, on, on the topic. So for example, foreigners in the Japanese workplace, HR management system in Japan, women in the workforce, um, and we talk about that reading so that students get background information. And then in the activity class, we have an activity related to that reading. And this is either asynchronous um, via Facebook, so we did it via Facebook group, um, or it's synchronous via Zoom. So sometimes students have to meet live and discuss about the topic in breakout rooms or work collaboratively on something. And sometimes we gave them assignments um, they can do um, asynchronous in, in their free time when, whenever they have time. So accordingly, um, for the assessment, the content classes and the activity classes both counted 50% of the grade. And since the activity classes included a lot of group work, um, we also developed um, a peer evaluation form um, to ensure an equal workload and, and fairness between the groups, because um, often it happens that some students do way more than others. But as a teacher, it's difficult to see which student is doing more and which student is doing less. So we have um, an evaluation form that students can submit. It's completely anonymous. So students write their name and then they write the name of the group members and submit it by email to the instructor. And then for each of those evaluation criteria, they can give one to four points from one strongly disagree to four strongly agree. So the scores can be between six to 24 points for each of the group members. So um, if we see that um, a group member has only six, eight or 10 points, it's very likely that those group members did not contribute significantly to the project. Whereas if a member has 20, 22 or even 24 points, it means that um, they also contributed a lot to the project. Um, so this is to ensure a little bit fairness um, during the group work because all members can evaluate each other and they know they can be evaluated. But since it's completely anonymous, no one knows what kind of score the, the group members um, give. Okay, um, the, the platforms we used for this course, um, as I said earlier, were um, Facebook groups for the asynchronous interaction, a Zoom for the synchronous interaction, and we used Google Jamboard for the collaborative work during classes. And I want to show you some examples um, from that platforms of this course. So um, first for the asynchronous interaction, we ask uh, all students to join a Facebook group um, we created. And in that Facebook group, um, students then um, could connect with their peers, uh, they could chat with them, um, and they could also exchange documents. Uh, and we as teachers, we could also upload um, assignments. So for example, we uploaded then the questions the Japanese students had to the American students, and then the American students had time offline to answer that questions and needed to send their answers back. So we used this as a platform for the entire asynchronous interaction and also for communication. Um, but there are way more um, possibilities to do that. You can use Slack instead. And you can use any other uh, platform for asynchronous interaction. Um, so we just did it with Facebook because everyone had Facebook, um, but uh, it, it can be anything uh, else. So um, for the live classes, then we used Zoom. And here are two images of the Zoom classes. So in one of the first classes, student made welcome messages. Um, and um, introduced each other. They also got the assignment then to make a short introduction video and upload that about Facebook that shows their day. So they had to film their apartment, their school, um, what they do throughout the day. 
Then later on, um, uh, we had uh, discussions about the topics. So we put students into breakout rooms. Um, but after the breakout rooms, we got them back in the main session. And then students had to reflect in the bigger group on their discussions. So each group had to choose like one person that is speaking for the entire group. And they had to share the, the outcome and the discussion of the group. And sometimes we also ask students um, to work collaboratively um, during that live online Zoom sessions. Um, so here is an example for one of the collaborations where we use Jamboard. Um, so in one of the last classes, for example, we ask students to make a, a Jamboard slide where they um, present the learning outcomes of the course. And as you can see here, um, learning outcomes were, were much more than only HR management and employment. It was a lot about food and culture. Um, for example, this group uh, had taco versus taco because that was some cultural misunderstanding in the beginning. For American students, taco is uh, Mexican food, whereas taco for Japanese students is usually takoyaki. So when they talked about takoyaki in the first class, they, there was some, some confusion what they meant. That is why they put this here as a learning outcome that they learned. It means different things. Um, so as you can see, beside uh, the, the knowledge and topic that that um, course fostered, uh, it also fostered uh, more cultural understanding um, and cultural openness. And this was also reflected um, in the student voices and in the course evaluation. Um, so one student said the call class not only gave us the opportunity to speak English, but also deepened the understanding of other cultures. And he said the class inspired him to study more about different cultures. Um, I had a student um, who was planning to go to the USA, but she couldn't go because of COVID-19. So she said still through the COIL course, she could experience cross-cultural exchange and understand different ideas and values through the group work with American students. And um, this was also reflected um, in the learning evaluation for which we used BAVI, um, the beliefs, uh, event values uh, inventory. Um, this is a tool that's uh, often used um, to evaluate COIL courses, and I just put um, the result for basic openness here. So as you can see, um, the course increased basic openness uh, among all students. So those who already had, uh, who already were quite open at the beginning of the course, their basic openness increased even much further. But even those students who were not very much open at the beginning of the course, they became a little bit more open uh, by the end of this course. Uh, um, we also checked uh, um, other scales and um, for critical thinking, uh, for example, also we found that the course uh, increased critical thinking. It reduced uh, gender stereotypes, uh, stereotypes about religions, um, so all in all, the um, course evaluation showed uh, that um, those high quality COIL courses actively uh, foster those 21st century skills um, I showed in the beginning. So to um, summarize and conclude, um, high quality COIL courses are different from just online learning courses and virtual exchange. Implementation is, cross, uh, is possible even across very different subjects with different learning outcomes and different evaluation criteria. Um, various types of interaction are possible, such as synchronous, asynchronous, or a mix of both. Um, and they promote the 21st century skills, uh, which are uh, important in, in employability skills for students um, when they start searching uh, jobs um, during the third and fourth years. So that's it um, from my side. Thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I hope that at the end, we will have a lot of questions and discussion about this topic. Thank you. Thank you very much.